A journey of over 1 million copies, services marketing textbook. Today, we are here with Professor Johan Witt. Thank you so much, Johan, for your time. Mark, thank you. I'm delighted to be with you. Thank you. I have seen a number of amazing textbooks that you have been you know, publishing. In fact, I'm also teaching services marketing, which I'm also using your textbook for both undergraduate and postgraduate level. Thank you. So let's start with what is the motivation for you to explore into this uh, publishing in term of textbook? Uh, I mean, I, I sort of stumbled into textbooks a little bit, if you will. So I've been quite early on in my career focused on services marketing. And, and uh, so I did my PhD on services marketing and since then have been my whole life in, uh, in, in that field. And there's also a, a sort of prof professional reason because I used to be a banker in my first career. So I, I actually, I, I've done all the German banking licenses. So I passed all of those banking exams. So that's in a service business. In London, I was a consultant. So I was was working in technology consulting with with a few companies, and then later on with a professor from London Business School. He had a consulting company in infrastructure technology and communication. So I've been in. So that's the whole telco broadband at that time. Also cable TV, satellite TV, pay TV kind of business broadband, and. That's all in the service business. So I've been my working life and my consulting was in service. And then I was just mesmerized. So when I started out as a young PhD student, the services field was relatively new. Yeah. And uh, so I, I started early on focusing on it. So virtually all of my research and, and virtually all of my teaching has been in, in, in services marketing. And if not, then it was adjacent, such as the MBA consulting project where I teach. But then again, I only take services cases where the company is a service business, right? So I don't do other projects here. And I mean, so my, my if you will, my PhD um, a grandfather, so the former PhD supervisor of my PhD supervisor is Chris Lovelock, Christopher Lovelock. And wow. he published the world's first services marketing textbook when he was at Harvard Business School in 1984. So there was no services marketing textbook before. And he asked me when I was here in Singapore, he asked me, hey, Jochen, I'd love to have a an Asian adaptation of of my textbook. Would you be interested? That means... Uh, searching and writing Asian cases, examples, uh, looking at what, what research is happening in Asia, integrating in, into the textbook. And to me, that sounded on one hand quite interesting. And on the other hand, it, it, was, it didn't sound like it's a lot of work. I mean, a few cases and adaptations, so on. So I thought, okay, why not I do this? I'll work with him. And he liked so much what we did with the case book here, with the textbook here, then he asked me when he wrote the fifth edition of, of the Global Textbook Services Market, he asked, hey, Jochen, would you like to join me on the fifth edition? And I said, sure, why not? So this is, it was mostly the US market and Europe. And he gave me at that time what we call a, a, a contributor contract, meaning you contract for one edition and then you see how it goes. Yeah. And at that time, the textbook didn't have a chapter on people, uh, didn't have much on CRM, didn't have a chapter on service scape. Yeah, so there were a lot of things which, because the book emerged in 1984 and there was not that much research, but by then the services literature has exploded. And as a PhD student, I mean, I was quite familiar with much of the literature. So I, I suggested to Christopher, shouldn't we add a chapter on this and a section on that? And yeah, he liked it very much what we did. And, and then he asked me for the sixth edition, or oh, would you like to become a co-author on the text? So then he gave me a permanent contract, if you will, as a co-author. And so this was a bit of the journey or the background, if you will. Um, personally, I love taking uh, writing the textbook and, and why. It really, I write a new edition every five to six years. So it's not too often. And what I do is I have 15 chapters and I go through all the service journals and the service literature that was published since the last edition. Yes. And I'm still quite tangible in that sense. I print out hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of articles. You could imagine five years. And I, so what happens over five years is six, seven, eight hundred articles maybe. 
And then I go through every article and, and look at, okay, which chapter does this article uh, go into? Like, let's say, for example, then I've got 15 chapters, 15 piles of papers, one for each chapter. And then on a paper, I write, let's say, if a paper uh, uh, fits into chapter one and chapter six and chapter seven, then I write one, six, and seven on that paper and put it on pile one for chapter one. And then I write chapter one. Once I'm done with this paper, then I look, okay, so the next chapter where this is relevant is on chapter six, so I just move it onto the next pile. So this kind of a nice um, visual organization of what happened in the literature over the last six years. And then even within chapters, once let's say chapter seven is communications. So I take this whole, it may be a huge pile of, of papers. I take it and then sort it again, based on which sections in that chapter does it fit into? Is it communication strategy? Is it word of mouth? Is it paid media? Is it earned media? Is it on intangibility or any of the consumer challenges uh, related to services here? So I sort the whole thing again on a massive table here. And I mean, I find it quite fascinating. You really see on, on where is the research happening right now? What's hot, what's not? And where are the big gaps still in the literature? And so for me, I mean, there are a number of benefits. Number one is after I've written an edition, I really understand the field and, and what, what's happening, what research is out there, where are things moving, number one. And number two, very often I can see, hey, you know, what are important topics, but there's little research on that. And I can give you, I mean, historically, for example, early on in my career, I teach executives and executive MBAs and MBAs, and, and you talk about uh, a complaint is a gift and service is recovery, be generous, but then executives tell you, but if you do that, customers will just come and cheat you. They take advantage of your generous service recovery um, uh, policies. And so there was nothing much research on this. So I did a number of papers. One was on cheating on service guarantees. The other was on opportunistic claiming in service recovery situations. So this kind of research came out basically that, hey, you know, this is a topic managers worry about, but we don't have anything much in the literature. Another topic was everyone talked about how important is word of mouth in service. But there was no, not much research on how do I as a business manage word of mouth. And so we started this whole massive research stream on referral reward programs how do i incentivize word of mouth what are where does it work where doesn't it work what are the drawbacks what are the advantages so i mean and you can see recently a lot of research on platform business models on, on service robots so i was quite early with service robots and uh, i mean already in 2015 in the eighth edition on the cover page i mean the, if you open the, the first cover by right, we had the Hena Hotel featured, you know, the, the Japanese hotel, which is which was world famous because yes. it had the most uh, robots uh, serving guests. So, I mean, I, I these are all sort of things uh, I enjoy doing. And, and from a research point of view, people will argue it doesn't really add in much, but it gives me a lot of personal satisfaction and, and it gives me um, a very comprehensive and overarching view of this whole field. It helps me with my teaching and my consulting. Yeah. And um, why I think, I mean, sort of my own take on it and, and why I think textbooks are very important for teaching and for learners is very simple. I mean, look, if I give you my textbook with one glance, there's an organizing framework there. You can see, Hey, what are the topics here? Yeah. So, you know, consumer behavior uh, strategy, then the four P's adapted to service, the three additional P's, then customer relationships and, and service recovery, complaint handling. And, and then, of course, the last big topic is moving a business towards world class um, service organization and cost effective service excellence. So you look at one glance, you can see, hey, what is this field all about? And then you can look at any one chapter, you just open it, there's an organizing framework to, that shows you the structure of what does service communications entail. So in one glance, you have a picture, you have a framework, you understand the structure. I don't have to talk a lot for you to gain that knowledge. 
And in a way, when you then teach or you read or you learn or you do a case study, you know the hooks where to put all of these topics. So, I mean, this is, I think, a massive advantage that your students come out from a course with a overarching comprehensive view of what is services marketing all about? What are the themes, the topics, the key uh, learning objectives you should have with it? I think that's one. And the other, what I love about a textbook is I don't teach the tables and figures and the pros and the cons and all of that. I enforce that students read the textbook. So even for my executive MBA, I assign readings. And before the class starts, I have a very short 20 minute multiple choice exam. And the thing is very easy. I said, look, you know, the exam is, is no big deal if you have done your readings and preparation. So I asked them to watch a few videos and to, to read a few chapters. So if you've done it, you have no problem doing this little exam. However, if you haven't looked at any of the materials, actually, you don't stand a chance. Yeah. So it's, <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, and, and it works. So, so students, they complain a bit initially, but then the feedback afterwards is always, wow, I never knew services marketing is so exciting. There's so much to learn. There's so much to take away with to bring back into my companies. So I think the readings, they uh, allow you to lighten your in-class time by not discussing bullet points and figures and tables and all of that but refer back to what you asked them to read. And then maybe you show the framework on the PowerPoint. Hey, you all read the Wheel of Loyalty here. Now let's discuss that a little bit. So it really helps you to do sort of flip classroom, more discussion-based teaching, which anyway is a lot more engaging and fun. So you don't talk so much. Your students do a lot more of the talking. And if you teach MBA, executive MBA, executive courses, they all have practical experience they can bring into the classroom, which may means you as a professor learn as well. And the students find it a lot more exciting to learn from their peers than from you. <laughs> that is what the classroom is all about, not about reading and repeating lecture note, but is collaboration and then learning from each other experience and, and other things. I also can uh, support the, the view that the books is because I'm actually using your books in uh, my postgraduate uh, services experience and also for services uh, marketing for the undergrad course. I can say that the book itself is 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 very good in terms of is cover all the topic that is relevant to mm -hmm. services marketing. It's not just about services marketing, it's about other things that is relevant to services marketing with a lot of interesting case study and all that. So I think it's a very good uh, comprehensive way in terms of uh, the books, in terms of the readings, and it's not uh, boring to read as well. So that's what I find in terms of my own experience <laughs> there. So uh, thank you so much for, for your sharing of the story. I think it's re very interesting. Now, um, it's actually not easy at all to, to, to have the books, you know, over 1 million copy. It's, it's actually like 1.5 or something like that. So it's way more than 1 million. So do you think what you have or what you or your team have done well to, to make this book became, say, the love of services marketing area? I mean, there, of, of course, um, we did, I mean, the publisher did a lot of marketing. So they, the, I mean, for, I've got two books. One, one is the fourth edition of Essentials of Services Marketing. That's with uh, Pearson Education. They have a sales force out, force out there that knocks on professors' doors and asks, hey, what are you teaching next term? And can I give you a desk review copies for those courses? So they do have the people on the ground and they, they sell the book to, directly to professors. World Scientific, my ninth edition of uh, services marketing, people, technology, strategy, um, they go more electronically, so they don't have so much of a sales force, but they are really reaching out via social media and email. And the other thing they are very uh, nice, that, that is if you are a professor and you would like to have a physical or an ebook desk review copy, they send it to you. So they're not stingy with desk review copies. And then if you have a copy in your hand, you look at it, you like it. Um, I think that that makes a big difference. 
And I mean, the overall textbook market is shrinking or consolidating, if you will. There are, I mean, I think when I started this book, we had maybe 15, 20 different services marketing textbooks out there. And there are fewer and fewer and fewer. And the reason is that it has become quite expensive to publish a good quality book. I mean, every Wall Street Journal cartoon I put in there, every photo I put in there, every Harvard Business School case study I reprint, costs money so just the rights and copyrights we pay are tens of thousands of dollars for every edition so unless you have sales you can't afford that mm -hmm. but if you don't have these things so let's say you don't have you don't have harvard business school cases in there it means then it's also maybe not so useful for professors because one reason of a textbook is that you don't have to pay so much anymore for other teaching materials exactly. if you still have to buy a lot of cases from harvard or from ivy then um the book is less attractive, yes. So I mean, this sort of this this problem here that that means then when the, when sales numbers go down for for a book, then also they have to cut costs, which then reduces quality. And I mean, um, not many books don't have full color, so we have beautiful paper quality, beautiful color, lots of photos and pictures and diagrams and. That makes the book also look a little bit more vibrant and, and interesting. So the whole design, we put a lot of effort into the color schemes and the design and the readability. And I think these things together then make it a high quality book. And even in terms of um, sort of learning aids, the we are quite strict in the sense that it has every chapter is very clear learning objectives and then has very clear summary in bullet points of a chapter and you know sometimes when you write something and they look later on look you write something and then there's no clear learning objective there's something wrong right or, or you write something and, and then there is no clear sort of executive summary bullet point there's also yes. something wrong so it gives you this discipline that everything has to have a learning objective and has to have a takeaway and a summary and if it doesn't have that probably is better to cut it out or to shrink it uh, dramatically. And the other thing I did is for every chapter, there is a one page diagram, if you will, that explains the connection amongst all the topics and contents. So it's a visual table of contents in bullet point forms. So you can see um, the, I, I'm a very structured person. So I learned by looking at pictures and structures so the book gives you various ways to internalize the structure. And then, of course, comes in between all of the stories and the examples and the theory and the tables and the figures. And even here, we try to have as many tables with bullet points and as many figures as possible, because some people learn best by looking at things. Some people learn best by reading things. So you can see there went a lot of thought into the quality of, of the book and how people will use it and learn from it. And Park, I like what you said. You said you don't find the book boring to read. We try to make it engaging and interesting. Yeah? And don't laugh. I asked at that time my 21-year-old daughter to read the book and tell me what is boring, what's exciting, what's interesting, uh, which of these pictures you like, what do, don't you like. So I very much listened to her on also on, you know, where I as an older guy here maybe not connect so well anymore with young people. So I, I asked, I got other people and we had a number of reviewers too who went through the book and give us feedback. So even here, we listened carefully to sort of customer feedback, if you will, to, to make sure the book resonates. And the other thing that really helped with the success of the book is that we have I think it's now 28 different adaptations and translations of this book. So we got even Dutch and, and, and uh, I mean, French, Italian and Spanish and Portuguese. We have all of those languages, but we also got uh, Vietnamese now. We got Bahasa I have Indonesia. Seen that book, yes. We're working on a Thai edition. We have a Japanese, a Korean, a Taiwanese, a Chinese. We got a localized Indian or South, uh, South Asian edition. Yeah, we are having a Mexican edition, a Brazilian edition. So, you, you, you know, we are really tailoring the book. 
And the reason is also a bit that often undergraduates, they prefer to read in a local language. But by the time people go for their master's degree, very often either the textbooks and or also the teaching are now in English. And, and so it's good to have both the local uh, sort of a localization and then also still the global textbook together because for different courses and different target audiences, you use different textbooks. Hmm. Such a rare opportunity to hear a story and a successful behind the books and everything like that. And I must say, uh, from what you have mentioned, the love and the thought that you and your team have put in is made me and then a lot of my students love your book so much. So thank you thank so you. much for your time today. And this is the journey of over 1 million copy of services marketing textbook with Professor Johan Witt. Thank you so much, Johan. Thank you, Park. Thank you.